Howdy, okay, so welcome back, and this is the introduction to periodic functions. When you're in grade 11, you're gonna be taking all of these um, functions that you're gonna consider, okay, so those functions, I have actually kind of graphed quite a few of them, and so within here, so the first one kind of on the top left, you know, looks like a um, parabola, so it's some kind of a quadratic, right, that it comes from the one on the right, just looks like a straight line. So lines you've probably studied all the way back to elementary school. And as you continue on in studying these different functions, so here is, for example, on the left bottom, it's an exponential, right? So you've studied exponentials, so they either kind of have an exponential growth or they have an exponential decay. They can be, of course, translated. Um, now, the one on the bottom right looks like a logarithmic functions, okay? So it looks like one of them. And here, so I have, you know, a cubic function here on the bottom left. And then the one on the right, although I kind of sketched it out, it's not exactly perfect, but it's, you know, maybe some kind of a polynomial that you have and you've graphed it out. So you've studied all of these different functions, um, but there's actually one type of function that is really, really useful in everyday life. And as you continue on um, studying mathematics, and in particular, as you get into sciences, and that is periodic functions. So these particular functions um, kind of pop out at us when we're studying them. You know, so they have a pattern that continuously is repeating. Um, as you, you know, take in, let's say your independent variable, let's say your x, okay? So as your x keeps on increasing or decreasing, then you're noticing that your function just keeps repeating. It does a repetitive pattern. And it basically has some kind of a period. So it has a length of time, okay, or a length within your domain where it looks like it changes and then all of a sudden, mm, it has the same pattern over and over and over again. And those ones are called periodic functions. So for instance, if you take, you know, real life, so here is one example, which you probably would kind of guess what this is coming from. You know, if you look at a patient, um, or even if you look at yourself in terms of trying to get your heartbeat, okay, and then the forces which your heart is actually exerting, we do actually try to get those signals and graph them. And you know, you'll notice that a heartbeat basically just continuously repeats. Now, of course, we all have a different heartbeat. You know, it also will depend over time. It's not exactly like it's identical, right? Because if you're stressed out, if you're sleeping, if you're exercising, so these, these rhythms will change. But you know, if you take a short period of time, you'll notice that, hmm, they're kind of repeating, right? So you'll have these repetitive patterns as you're going through. So for instance, you know, if I take it, okay, and then let's say I would want to be able to match this up, I'm going to try to draw it out for you within here, okay, and let me maybe dot it in. So if you would take this, you know, these patterns that we have within here, so let's say, you know, if I box this in here, so something like that. Um, so if you're looking at this, and now you take this window, it looks like it's, you know, as you keep going, you know, and I take the next window, well, it looks exactly the same as the window before it and then the window before it, you know, so it just continues on from left to right. And it has this repeating pattern as we're going through. And these repeating patterns can happen and they do happen in nature. So, you know, this is kind of your heartbeat and it would have been the signal that we would have received. And it is actually a function, right? So it would pass your test in terms of your vertical test. So it still looks kind of very similar to a function. Here is another function, you know, so this one, you know, let's say if that's your y axis there, so it starts, it's basically flat, like it's like a flat line, and then it abruptly goes down, and then it comes back up, and then it's a flat line. So once again, we have these repetitive patterns. So these ones are called periodic functions, where basically your patterns continuously are repeating. Now, the one in blue that you see, it's almost like you can think of like a machine and a machine maybe is stamping down, you know, let's say, I don't know, let's, you know, there's an Apple logo or something like that, or maybe your, you know, your 
initials or something and it has a stamp, you know, and it's, a, it's at a particular height and it does nothing, okay? And then the conveyor belt comes in, you know, and then it notices, okay, stamps it down. So you can see that, okay, it's at a particular height, stamps it down, goes up, you know, the conveyor belt continues, another one comes up, stamps it down. And, you know, you see these patterns repeating over and over. You know, we are also a very repetitive creatures, right, over time. And there's very, you know, quite a few of these examples of these cyclical patterns that continuously happen. I mean, think of a day and night, right? We're just continuously kind of repeating that pattern. And where it's coming from is, you know, the earth is rotating right around. So, you know, here's another pattern, you know, maybe the earth is kind of rotating and we have, you know, um, daylight and sunlight and then the amount of hours that we have, you know, and it just keeps continuously repeating and over and over and over again. So these ones are examples and they come up from nature where we basically have these periodic functions. And as you study the first periodic function, so here I gave you a few examples, but you know, this one is going to kind of stick around with you, this green one, because you know, as you studied trigonometry and you studied sines and cosines, so those are ratios. And if you remember the unit circle, you know, if you remember the unit circle, the sines and cosines, so it's just spinning around and around and around, right? And then those actual ratios of sines and cosines were continuously kind of repeating, right? If you go around 360 degrees or 2 pi. So keep that in mind in your periodic functions. In this video, I just want to introduce just a few things, right? Just a few concepts and give you a couple of definitions with respect to these periodic functions, okay? So the first thing that I kind of wanna do is, let me copy this one down, okay? And you can do that for any periodic function that you have, so let me copy this. And I'm gonna bring this down and I wanna define a few things. So first of all, you know, what is a period, right? In these functions, what is a cycle? Um, these maximum and minimums that happen, so these peaks, Okay, and these trials that happen, okay, within these periodic functions. Um, what is the mid-range? Okay, so sometimes it's kind of an equation of the axes. Sometimes people refer to that. I like mid-range because it's kind of the midpoint because we have these repetitions that happen. You know, what is that midpoint that we have? And then your amplitude, you know, so what's the amplitude, which basically is kind of the height of these periodics, right, that you continue on. So, you know, if I'm going to bring this back down here, let me paste it in here. All right. Okay. So let me kind of try to repeat. So when you're talking about a period, um, a period is the length of basically from your domain. Now it depends. Your domain um, might be, you know, your X, right? We designate it with X and then our range is typically designated with Y. But because these things very often happen from nature, our domain, instead of maybe X, sometimes people will refer it to as T, which is time, right? Um, but it doesn't matter. So when you're using your domain, your period is going to be the, uh, the length, okay, of time or the length of whatever domain you're using. So your X that you have, where just one pattern, okay, is created. And that one pattern we call a cycle. So within here, you will notice that my patterns that I have, so if I wanted to kind of map it out, I'm going to try to map it out in here. Okay, so within here, so about there, let me create this window. Okay, now I'm going to scale this window so it is actually kind of covering the entire thing. All right, so what I've highlighted there, so that window would basically be, okay, one whole cycle of my periodic function. It captures everything. After that point, it just keeps repeating, right? So let me kind of readjust it right there, okay? So notice that what happens is it goes, okay? So from right here, okay? So I'm gonna highlight it like this, okay? So it goes like this, and then it comes back. And that is called one cycle. So that's a cycle that we have Okay, so this would have been one cycle. And these cycles keep repeating, right? They keep repeating over and over and over again. 
the distance that this takes, so the distance that you have, so all the way from here to the end, okay, so that value, so from here to here, so if you go all the way from here to here, that distance, let's say if we called this x, right, okay, and that would have been our domain, and then this would have been our y. So, sorry, x is our independent variable. So that um, amount, so whatever it might be, okay, that would have been called your period. So this is your period, okay? It is the length from the start of the cycle to the end of the cycle. And if it's in time, right? So if it was, for instance, like we had here, like if it's the machine stamping down or our or heartbeat beating, okay, then the period is actually the amount of time it takes for one cycle to complete. So let's say one heartbeat or one, you know, stamp, okay, all the way down, okay, and then it just keeps repeating. So that's what you would have had, okay, within here. So that's your period, okay, so it's the length of time or the length of the X that you have, which covers one entire cycle. And after that cycle, it just keeps repeating. Now, these maximum and minimums that we have, those are the kind of the peaks and the troughs, okay, that we have within these functions, okay? So our maximums, okay, that we would have, because these are repetitive, okay, and they happen over and over. So here is our maximum, right? So this is the peak that we would have. And then here, okay, so this, you know, let me, kind of put it right here, this would have been your trial, okay? So that is kind of the minimum that you have. So it's the bottom peak, okay? And they may look a little bit different, right? So this one is a nice kind of a wavy looking one, okay? This one within here, for example, the blue one, it's not very nice. You know, your maximum, your peak is basically a flat line. And then your, you know, your trial, which is basically your minimum in this case, would have been just that little dip Okay, kind of at the bottom, right? So that's what you have. And you can do the same thing with, for example, the heartbeat or any other function that might be displayed for you. So these ones are just kind of things that you should keep in mind, right, as you're going through. So that's your maximum and minimums or your peaks and troughs, okay, if it's kind of like a wavy, okay, form. Your mid-range is basically the midpoint, it almost like it creates an axis where it splits it right in the middle. Now, in this case, because it is around zero, so notice that it's very symmetrical around zero. So our mid range would have been, you take the maximum, right? So your peak value, you take the minimum, you add them up. It doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. You just add them up. And then you divide by two. So it's like taking, you know, the full out, average in between them, okay, and that would have been your mid-range. Sometimes this is called, you know, the equation. So if you want to know the equation, it would just be y is equal to, in this case, it's centered around zero, right? So it would have been y is equal to zero, which is your equation of the axes, and that's the kind of um, mid-range point in between. Now, that mid-range point, if it's not centered around, so within here, so notice our mid-range point for the blue one would not be zero, right? It would have been somewhere along here. It's kind of the midpoint right there. Now it could be a little bit off, but it's more or less that, okay? And then your heartbeat, again, you would have to take that peak point, the bottom point. Now it looks like it's kind of centered around that axis at zero, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's a little bit above or maybe it's a little bit below, just depending on where these peaks, okay? and then these trials ha um, happen for us, all right? So that's the mid-range point that we have, and it's sometimes called the equation of the axes of this periodic function. So that's what you have there. Now, what about the last one here, which is the amplitude? So amplitude is kind of like the height, but it's the height from the mid-range point. So whatever your mid-range point is, Okay, your amplitude is going to be the height that you have. Because it's in the middle, so right here, so that height, okay, so this value, okay, that you would have. So the height of this is basically your amplitude. So that is your amplitude. That's what we call that in these particular functions. 
So it's from the mid range K going up or go, coming down, right? So the, um, you know, if you go in this direction as well, this also gives you your amplitude, but now it goes in the opposite direction, but they're equivalent, right? Because if you're taking the axes, the mid range point, then you're right stuck in the middle. Okay, so that's what it would have been. And now that amplitude, so for instance, within here, so within these ones, so this amplitude, that would have been this distance, okay, going up right here. It's from the mid-range going up right there. For our, you know, for this one, for the heartbeat, okay, it maybe would have been something like that, okay, assuming that that is the mid-range, which is the middle point. So that's your amplitude, and sometimes we just designate it kind of with an A, Okay, in terms of designating the amplitude. Now, all of these, I haven't given you any kind of algebraic equation for it, right? We don't have an actual function given. These are just visuals, right? So we're just visually trying to map these out. But the reality is in real life, it's very hard for us you know, to try to gather information and then have these wonderful and beautiful quadratics and lines, you know, and exponentials and logarithms, okay, those functions. But what you see in all of these functions that you've studied, none of them are actually periodic. They don't repeat. They don't have a repetitive pattern, which just continuously is repeating. So all of these that we have in here, none of them are periodic. There is no repetition here at all, right? So it's just continuously changing. So any kind of, you know, if you would want to try to level in on a cycle, right, and then move it over, it would have to be the same, okay? But it's nowhere seen in here. In fact, you have to kind of be, be you have to be careful with these periodic functions because some of them might look periodic, but they're not. So for instance, you know, if you had a function like this, Okay, but you're noticing like, oh, wait a minute, it's kind of growing on me. Now it looks like it's repeating, right? Like it's, it's almost like, okay, this wavy pattern. But there is no official period that you have here and no cycle. Because if it was, it would have looked identical. You would have taken a snapshot and then you would have moved it over and it would have been identical again. So this is definitely not periodic, right, at all. So it has to continue on Okay, with these patterns um, that you had, you know, another one. So let's say if I would draw this one, I mean, this one's not even a function, but if you had a circle right here, okay. Okay, so if you wanted to map out a circle, again, it's not a function, it doesn't pass the vertical test, okay. Um, this is definitely not periodic as well. So periodic means that it takes and is, has a repetitive pattern and it's over and over and over again where you can identify what the cycle is, you can identify what the period is, so the length of that cycle, you can identify that, and it will have some kind of an amplitude, okay, within there, and there's gonna be a mid-range point. So with all of these, because they're periodic, okay, so notice that the key thing is repetition. Repetition, it's repeating. And that's why we say that it's periodic. So when things are come in periods, right, where they just loop around and it's almost like the same cycles, and we have many of those in the nature, some of them we like, some of them we don't like, okay? So those are the type of functions that are periodic, okay? So that's the introduction, okay? In the future videos, we're gonna kick off, and especially as you're in grade 11, we're going to now take our sines and cosines and map them up and show you that they're just periodic functions. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video. Bye, everybody.